up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you have a fantastic Thursday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing I want to talk about today is Burger King. They are the latest company in the news because people are not the biggest fan. Not the biggest fan of what they just did. Burger King recently launched this ad. You're watching a 15-second Burger King ad, which is unfortunately not enough time to explain all the fresh ingredients in the Whopper sandwich. But I got an idea. Okay, Google. What is the Whopper Burger? Now, for those of you that do not have a Google Home, that was a marketing ploy to use a product in someone's home to then further an ad experience. Or as you may have seen in the headline, Burger King hacks Google Home. Okay, Google is the prompt for the device, and then you ask your question, in this case, it was about the Whopper. And while some people thought this was an interesting marketing move, there were a lot of people saying, hey, how about you don't? If I wanna know more about your product, I'll take the extra steps myself. But then people also started to troll Burger King. People realized that Google Home was just reading off Burger King's Wikipedia page so that they went to the Wikipedia page and started editing it. This then resulted in Google Homes informing potential customers that the Whopper is a burger consisting of a flame-grilled patty made with 100% rat and toenail clippings. It is a cancer-causing hamburger. Some are made with 100% medium-sized children, and others are even topped with cyanide. But then it appeared that Google maybe wasn't a fan of this. There were no reports that Google had given Burger King their blessing to use their device in this manner, and actually it turned out three hours later, Google reportedly disabled the Whopper command, making it so that Google Home would no longer trigger when the ad plays. And just like that, Burger King King's ad was proven powerless for like 20 seconds. It seems that Burger King was aware that Google might not be a fan of this and try to stop them. So they developed a similar but different ad that they would later put on TV that night that was a workaround to the block. Which I have to say, as annoying as I find this, I kind of have to tip my hat to them. There are all these articles about how the ad backfired. Headlines reading, Burger King's Google hack ad was a whopper of a fail. I hate puns. I know 2017 seems to be the year of the pun, but I, I am not a fan, which I am aware by acknowledging that. 80% of the comments gonna be pun. Even their official YouTube video has more dislikes than likes, but I think ultimately this is gonna be a win for Burger King. Yes, this is kind of annoying, but it is so not offensive that most people are gonna forget about it pretty fast. We've got Sean Spicer talking about Holocaust centers, Pepsi and Kendall Jenner single-handedly ending the struggle for equality. You got United uh, reaccommodating passengers' butts out of their seats and teeth out of their mouth. This is the least annoying stupid thing this week. And also it does shine a light on the very real problem we're going to have with integrating smart households. Right now, anyone that's not watching this with headphones on, they can just be messed with. Alexa, play Hamilton Broadway musical. Okay, Google, set alarm for tomorrow at 4 a.m. Xbox, off. Yes. Hey, Cortana, does anyone actually use you? Hey, Siri, FaceTime mom. I'm a child of divorce. This is a potential problem we all face, whether it be from trolls or from advertisers. Now, is it gonna make me lose sleep at night? No. Will it change how advertising works in the future, specifically the regulations around it? Maybe. But in the meantime, the only thing that's gonna stop people from doing this is if people are actively angry enough to stop buying that product or watching that person. And in the meantime, Burger King just got millions of dollars of free advertising. And I personally believe this is not going to affect them in any real negative way. But a question I wanna pass off to you. One, how is your mom doing? And Two, is this annoying enough that you're like, I'm never, I'm never gonna buy a Whopper ever again? Or this is genuinely annoying, or no, you are interested by this? I'd love to know your thoughts here. But from there, I wanna share some stuff I love today, and today in Awesome, brought to you by the sports shirt. A shirt that says, while I may not understand the sport, the rules, why these teams are named things that do not represent the area. In fact, they can just move to different cities and states and keep the same name. I don't get it, but I appreciate you inviting me to tag along. And I appreciated it so much, I wanted to show my support in a nondescript way. So many of you started reserving the next batch of these shirts that they are back for three days in the link down below. And the first bit of awesome is we got a restricted trailer for a movie I didn't even know about. It's called The Hitman's Bodyguard and it stars Samuel L. Jackson and Ryan Reynolds. I'm on board. There are a few actors that I will just, I will watch everything they do. Chris Pratt is one of them, Ryan Reynolds is the other. Ever since Wade, I'm on board the Reynolds train, not getting off anytime soon. Then, not to sound like a BuzzFeed article, but when some of you hear this, you're gonna feel old. As of yesterday, the video that launched FunnyOrDie.com, The Landlord, which starred Will Ferrell and a two-year-old girl, as of yesterday, that video became 10 years old. So if you want to take a journey back to your past or you've never seen this piece of internet history, you can check that out. Then we got a trailer for Transformers The Last Night. And I gotta say, watching it, I'm so conflicted because I can't tell if I am excited because I'm like, oh, that could look cool. Or I'm excited because some of it's going to be so dumb and stupid, I'm gonna just have so much fun making fun of it. But at the same time, I'll still probably love it because there's, there's a 12 year old that lives in part of my brain. And actually, speaking of brains, we have Lil Dicky's new music video. It's called Pillow Talking Featuring Brain. It starts off slow and is one of the weirdest, most 
most fantastic music videos I've seen in a while. Then, if you want to see a cool vlog that's really also kind of a mini doc, YouTube channel Strange Parts put out a video called How I Made My Own iPhone in China, and it's it's it's, it's a guy building his own iPhone in China. It's very interesting. I never really thought to do something like that, and then watching this guy jump through the hoops is it's really fascinating to watch. And if you want to see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, anything at all, links as always are in the description down below. Then, in people send me some of the weirdest stories news. A model by the name of Martina Big was making news not because she reportedly has the largest boobs in all of Europe, but she's in the news because she has shocked fans by taking something else to the extreme, and that is extreme tanning. That is so concerning. It looks like she has permanent blackface, and I don't mean that like she looks black, it just looks like she's made the poor decision to wear blackface and then got stuck that way. You know what? I don't understand it. It is, it's, it's not for me is the nicest way I could say my reaction to her pictures are. But I guess if she's not hurting anybody, it's all good. That can't be healthy. Whatever. I'm done with this. And then we got another update in the United Airlines scandal. And no one's going to be surprised here. It looks very much like there is going to be a massive lawsuit soon. Dr. David Dow's attorney gave a press conference today along with Dow's daughter. The attorney is a guy by the name of Tom Demetrio. He's known as one of the prominent high-powered personal injury lawyers out there. And he's worked in high-profile situations in the past. And we learned more about the situation and the damage. Demetrio said Dr. Dow lost two teeth, has to have reconstructive surgery, and suffered a serious concussion. And connected to that concussion, he says Dow has absolutely no memory of going back on the airplane. So that video where he's running back on the plane, he's saying he doesn't even remember that happening. Also, while some outlets like CNN had reported that there was already a lawsuit filed, what actually appears to have happened is the attorney filed a discovery motion. This for documents, videos, anything they could use for a potential lawsuit. And the attorney says that they are planning to file a lawsuit and they have up to two years that they can actually file one. And if the press conference is any indication, it doesn't look like they're just going to be suing United Airlines. Just because United is responsible doesn't mean the city of Chicago isn't also responsible. So buckle up! Oh, also, unfortunately for United, that wasn't the only bit of news. News is coming out from over the weekend that on a United Airlines flight from Houston to Calgary, a scorpion fell from a United Airlines overhead bin and stung a man. And after this thing, another passenger quickly reaccommodated the scorpion to death, then throwing the remains in the toilet. When the flight landed, EMT came on the plane, but luckily the man was fine. So that was a thing. I think it's just for United, when it rains, it pours. It's just so weird. And then let's talk about Instagram. Instagram's in the news for for two reasons today, one good and one incredibly bad. The good for them is that according to new reports, more people use Instagram stories than Snapchat stories. Reports are coming out that Instagram stories has 200 million active users a day, whereas Snapchat only has 158 million, to which some people responded to this news, oh, Snapchat's dying, whereas others pointed out, of course Instagram's gonna have better numbers, they already had a larger user base. Although the argument against that is Facebook has one of the largest user bases out there, and I haven't seen anyone actually using Facebook stories. So far, it doesn't seem like that's gonna be a success there, the user base is different. And I will say, while I was on the fence initially about Instagram stories, I actually like it more than Snapchat. It lets me record a little longer. I don't always use the lenses from Snapchat, so I don't really care. Instagram stories also lets me link out to off of Instagram things in Instagram stories. I also like the live feature on that, but it's also a personal preference. I'd love to know if you guys have a preference. You can also follow me on both of them. Do you use these things to put stuff out there? Do you just consume? You don't use it at all? I'd love to know. But of course, like I said, Instagram was in the news for a horrible story as well. And that's the news that a 13 year old boy accidentally killed himself on an Instagram live stream. According to the young boy's mother, she said she was taking the trash out when she heard a loud boom come from her son's room. She kicked in the door, found him dead, lying in a pool of blood. And she said soon after, 40 to 50 kids rushed over to their house. Apparently the news spread really fast because some of his friends were watching him on Instagram live and saw it happen. And she said she was told that in the live stream, someone asked why he didn't have a clip in the gun and told him to put a clip in the gun. And as he put the clip in the gun, that's when the gun went off. And also to the question, of, well, where did he get the gun? People don't seem to know right now. The mom says she doesn't know. She says that she was told he got the gun from someone else who also got it from someone else. Detectives saying that they're looking into it to see if they can find out where the gun came from. And I know from this story, they're gonna be the comments as always of why do we even need to have guns? Anytime there's a gun in the news, there is that debate. And here's what I'll say. Separate from that debate, please understand and inform anyone that could potentially ever be around a gun ever, which is everyone. Rule number one of guns is always treat guns like they are loaded, even if it looks like it's not. And of course, that's on top of the uh, hopefully understandable advice of maybe don't put guns where kids can get them. This is basic stuff that can save lives. And then let's talk about some international and political news. And the first thing I want to address is a lot of people messaged me asking me to talk about the 150,000 Chinese soldiers sent to the North Korean border. But I didn't talk about it because I couldn't find any legitimate news sources that were talking about it. Just like the story yesterday where on social media it was blowing up that the mainstream media got the wrong Dr. Dow. No, that was just something people were spreading because they wanted to bash the mainstream news. And here, I am very 
very critical of mainstream news. But I'm also very critical of people sharing and claiming something as truth, even if they don't look into it actually being based in reality. And I'm not trying to villainize you. It is something that we all need to just address in our everyday lives. And so in regards to the 150,000 Chinese troops, it's looking like it's not real. According to senior US intelligence and military officials, this is not true. There was no new massing of Chinese troops. Reportedly, there is as many as 250,000 Chinese troops that are always operating in northeastern China. And the US did not see any sign Beijing had moved them closer to the Yalu River, which separates North Korea from China. And when looking into this story, my favorite part came from an NBC News article that read, one Pentagon official told NBC News in language too profane to publish that that's exactly what he thought happened with the China troop tale. And the thing he was agreeing with is that there's a lot of money to be made before a story is proven fake or true. And I don't mean that in relation to AdSense on a fake news website. I mean that you can actually cause a fluctuation in the international market. Then we had Syrian President Bashar al-Assad doing an interview. And in it, he claimed that his government had nothing to do with the chemical attack in Syria, saying the allegations were 100% fabrication, adding that the Syrian government gave up its chemical weapons stocks as part of a 2013 agreement, and then going on to accuse the United States, saying our impression is that the West, mainly the United States, is hand in glove with the terrorists. They fabricated the whole story in order to have a pretext for the attack. And when talking about the evidence from the chemical attack that has left over 80 dead, including many children, he said it's not clear yet what happened during the incident, since evidence touted by the West comes from a branch of Al-Qaeda, adding, how can you verify a video? You have a lot of fake videos now. We don't know whether those dead children were killed there. Were they dead at all? The story is not convincing by any means. Meanwhile, according to a senior U.S. official, the U.S. military and intelligence community intercepted communications featuring Syrian military and chemical experts talking about preparations for the sarin attack last week. And an important part of this news is to understand the timeline. The official is saying the U.S. did not know prior to the attack that it was going to take place, but after the attack, there was an immediate review of all of the intelligence that had been acquired. They went through all the intercepts, and that's why U.S. officials are saying that there is no doubt that Bashar al-Assad was behind this. And as far as the Russians potentially being involved, the official said, so far there are no intelligence intercepts that have been found directly confirming that Russian military or intelligence officials communicated about the attack. And the last bit of international news that you may have already seen headlines for. The United States just dropped the mother of all bombs in Afghanistan. You also may have seen it described as the U.S. military dropping the largest non-nuclear bomb we have in Afghanistan. And so there are a lot of people freaking out because when you compare anything to nukes, so you start talking about nuclear weapons, people go, wait, what? So let's talk about this because it is a big deal because this is the first time this bomb has been used in an active combat situation because it is very important to understand that the destruction of this bomb is just a fraction of a nuke. And I'm talking about the U.S.'s weakest nuclear weapon. So let's talk about the mother of all bombs, otherwise known as a MOAB, which stands for Massive Ordnance Air Blast Weapon. It is a 21,600 pound GPS guided bomb. And reportedly the main attribute of the MOAB is that it causes overpressure. As explained by people smarter than myself, that overpressure caused when the bomb detonates at a low altitude over its target is designed to crush underground tunnels and bunkers like the ones often used by ISIS. The Moab is said to have a very narrow target set. Basically, you need targets in caves, canyons, clearing minefields. So that's why we have U.S. Air Force officials saying that this was the right kind of munition for what we were engaged in. Pentagon spokesman Adam Stump said the bomb was dropped on a cave complex believed to be used by fighters affiliated to ISIS. The Pentagon saying in a separate statement that the mission had been in planning stages for months. And a big thing to keep in mind is a lot of what I'm talking about now is to explain why we would use this weapon, why it is a big deal, but also not the kind of deal where people are comparing this to the last two times the United States used nukes. And this is just me talking about the comparison. I don't want to completely minimize this. The Moab is a big ass bomb. It has an estimated blast yield of 11 tons. It has a believed blast radius, the core blast radius of one mile. That's a big ass bomb, although it doesn't generate this, the same heat and radiation of a nuke. And as of right now, that's really all the information we have. We don't know if there was an estimated amount of damage. We don't know the number believed to be dead from this bomb. And ultimately, excuse my phrasing, we're just gonna kind of have to wait to see what the fallout is here. With that said, this is the Philip DeFranco Show. It is not just a show, it is a conversation. So I wanna know what you think about this story, the first one, anything in between. Let me know what you're thinking in those comments down below. And that's actually where I'm gonna end today's show. And remember, if you liked this video, you like what I do on this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you missed and you wanna watch yesterday's Philip DeFranco Show, you can click or tap right there to watch that. If you wanna see the newest vlog, you can click or tap right there to watch that. But that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.